Fundamentalism looks to the old paths. The opposite of fundamentalism, according to this passage I just read for you, Jeremiah 6.16, would be modernism. Right? Just things that are, that are modern and new, not the old paths, not the old way of doing things. And you know, the Bible is the oldest way because it's from everlasting. The Word of God has always existed. It hasn't always been given to us, right? Obviously, it's been delivered unto man at various points throughout history. But the words of God, the Word of God has always existed. Always. It is eternal. So, um, this is the oldest path to look to, and it's the right way. And, um, you know, what I kind of want to deal with, like I said, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of things we could go into. We could look into, um, you know, I, and I could preach on the, the inerrancy of the scripture and literal and all this other stuff. But what I want to kind of just spend most of my time focusing on here is, is why people disparage fundamentalism just as a whole, right? Christian fundamentalism. And you'll hear people make claims like, well, there's no love there, right? Or the methods don't really work. And, you know, we had a good example of this, just talking about this this morning, of how the world wants to portray fundamentalism with the, with the, you know, the, the news article that came out about us just calling us a hate group and everything else. I was talking to Brother Corey before service. He had just, he had just seen that. He hadn't, see, he hadn't known about that before. He had relatively recently seen that. And he's like, you know, they completely uh, portray something that just, it's just not the way things are. Like, it's not, he's been coming here. He knows. As I said, I wish other people, you know, could actually come and see what the church is about and what our ministry is about. You know, the, the, the news, the world's going to want to make it sound like, oh, man, these guys just sit around hating all day and they're all about hate. And that's what, you know, it's like, that's not what we're about at all. Amen. I mean, we have to be literally like people need to drag us into talking about a lot of that stuff when we're out loving people and trying to preach the gospel. It's what happened a couple weeks ago. We had someone just, just trying to get, you know, he's like, you guys are spreading hate. We're bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to people. Amen. You're the one that's bringing up all this other stuff. You're the one that wants to talk about the homos. You're the one that wants to talk about, you know, perverts. I'm not going out trying to talk to people about perverts. That's not what we're all about. We don't sit around talking about it. We just, we're trying to serve the Lord and do our thing. But yes, we do believe what the Bible literally says. And that's where we are as fundamentalists. We believe what the Bible literally says. So when you read passages like in the law of God, God's perfect laws, we believe them. We believe that the judgment that God gave is appropriate and ought to be in instituted, ought to be in place. Because how can we say that we know better than God and that God's judgment is wrong and God's judgment is you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. We know better. We need to be more lenient on people because love is love or whatever you want to say, whatever stupid argument you want to make, whatever philosophy you want to follow. It doesn't matter if it doesn't line up with the word of God. Hey, look, we believe the word of God. Amen. And that's where fundamental, fundamentalism lies is, is that we need to, you know, that's what we believe in here is that it's, it's all based off of what the Bible literally says. So, you know, people make these claims against fundamentalism that there's, oh, there's no love there. Why? Because we have strict rules. And they, and they mistake strictness and strict rules and having high standards for no love. When in fact, it's the exact opposite. Amen. That's right. We want our children, for example, to say, oh, man, I don't know what it would be like to be like a Burzens kid. You know, they've got all those rules in that house and they can't do this and they can't do that. I don't know. They seem pretty happy to me. You, and, you know, you can see for yourself. See if there's any love in our house. See if there's any love in this church. You all know what the answer is to that. That's right. Amen. But these are just claims that come from outsiders that want to make fundamentalism look bad. And, you know, also they, they come from places where amongst fundamentalists, you're going to have weirdos out there. You're going to have weird cultish churches out there. You're going to have organizations. We've got bad people you know, behind the pulpit, and unfortunately, that could, that could tarnish and stain a reputation that, that could apply, that people will apply to all churches. And uh, that's unfortunate uh, that people do that, but that is kind of the way it is. And oftentimes, you'll see people using anecdotal evidence of some person that went to a fundamental church, and now they're just completely turned away from God. And, you know, how many times have you heard that? Oh, you're just going to turn people away from God. You just don't want people... 
And they blame fundamentalism for it. But the, the, that level of argumentation is just completely wrong because if someone is practicing fundamentalism, and I would say it correctly, by going to the Word of God, if someone gets really upset and angry and is turned off by fundamentalism, then they're getting turned off by literally the Word of God. If that's what's being taught. If it's not man's opinion, if it's not these weird interpretations and telling you why the Bible doesn't mean what it actually says, but you're actually just preaching the Word of God for what it says, and people get turned off and, oh man, I don't want to have anything to do with that. If that's what you, well look, then you don't have anything to do with God's Word. So I would say, you know, you could say, well, that approach, you know, is turning people away. It's not that approach. It's the Word of God, then, that's turning people away. And at the end of the day, what are you going to do? Hey, if God said it, again, am I just going to censor God's Word and change God's Word to try to, to, you know, make it easy for everyone that hears it? No. Now you're tampering with the truth. You're tampering with the Word of God. Who do I think I am to do something like that? To judge God's word and to judge, oh, well, this is going to drive people away. That's way above our pay grade. Okay? God's the one who gave us his word, and we're supposed to just believe it and follow it and teach it. That's right. And don't hold anything back. 